Hello everyone. Welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about percentages and we have a number of, of objectives lined up for today, five of them, um, to define and use percent, to write percentages as fractions, and to reverse that by writing fractions as percent. We're also going to, going to be including um, decimals in there. And we are going to write one number as a percentage of another number and calculate a percentage, percentage of a number. Um, each of these are simply in their own right, and so this won't be a very long lesson. And so um, having said all of that, let's jump right into our first objective and talk about what percentage is. Quickly, a percentage is a special fraction with a denominator of 100. So yes, a percentage is a fraction. Normally, we don't write it as a fraction, as in with a numerator and a denominator but a percentage is a very special fraction and it has a denominator of 100. So when we're calculating percentages, what we're actually doing is sharing something into 100 parts and we use this percentage symbol beside our number to indicate that the number we are using is percentage and not an ordinary number. So let's look at this um, bit of arithmetic here. Notice that 10 out of 10 um, when we divide that out, it's the same thing as 1. And if you should get 10 out of 10 on your math paper, for example, you are sure to get 100%. So understand this from now that 10 out of 10 is the same thing as 1, which is the same thing as 100%. So 100% typically means just the whole thing, all of it, whatever the thing is. And generally, we just treat it as 1, the number 1. Um, especially when you're dealing with questions with algebra, it's important that we write percentages in decimal form so that we don't get um, um, wrong and ridiculous answers. So 10 out of 10 is the same thing as 1 is the same thing as 100%. All right. So um, percentage being then out of 100, that is we share something into 100 parts and we compare those parts together. And, and use them to make sense of um, whatever it is that we're talking about. So suppose we wanted to change between fractions, decimals, and percentages. Let's start here. 50% means the same thing as, since percentage out of a percentage is out of 100, then 50% actually means 50 out of 100. So if I should write that down as 50 out of 100, then we realize that we can reduce this as dividing this by 50, we get one and dividing this by 50, we get two. So 50 over 100 can be redu reduced down to a common fraction, and that being a half, one over two. We can also um, write this 50 over 100 as a decimal by dividing this 50 by 100 and dividing 50 by 100, we end up with 0.5. So we can take a percentage, we can write that percentage as a common fraction or as a decimal fraction. Now what if we have a common fraction, as in the case here, 3 out of 10? We can write that 3 out of 10 as a decimal simply by dividing 3 by 10. And in dividing 3 by 10, we end up with 0 0.3. But if we want to write this 3 over 10 as a percentage, then we simply take that 3 over 10 and multiply it by 100%. When we multiply it by 100%, we're actually, actually saying what is 3 tenths of 100% or 100% and 3 tenths of 100% gives us 3 times 10 here, 30%. So we can write this um, common fraction here as a percentage by simply writing it as 30%. We can also take the decimal and write the decimal as a percentage. Um, simple method would be just to multiply it by 100. So 0 0.25 multiplied by 100, and that would give us 25. So 0 0.25 here is the same thing as 25%. And we can also change that 25% back to our common fraction by writing 25 over 100, since percentage is out of 100, and dividing through by 25. 
and in this case we get a quarter. So these are simple examples, but the idea is essentially the same, whether the fractions are simple or complicated. Um, if we have a decimal number, we can take that decimal number and multiply it by 100 to turn it into percentage. And we can also simplify that percentage into a common fraction. If we have a common fraction, we can change that to a decimal by dividing by the denominator, the numerator divided by denominator, and multiply that common fraction by 100% to change it to percentage form. And also, if we have percentage, we can also change it to decimal and common. So we can interchange between all three. And sometimes it becomes necessary for you to write a percentage as a decimal or a common fraction, depending on the question that you're trying to work out. So let's try to work out some of these. Um, the first question we want to look at is how do you write one number as a percentage of another number? So our question is what percentage of 25 is 17? What percentage of $25 is $17? Um, when a question is written like this, in this um, type of anatomy, then we need to pay attention to the number that comes here. What percentage of this? This number becomes our denominator. So once the question says what percentage of, this number automatically becomes denominator. And this one becomes by default the numerator. So what we do is that we set up a fraction and we say 17 over 25. And we want to get this in percentage form. So what we do is that we multiply by 100%. And in multiplying by 100%, notice that we can do a simple division here. And here we get 17 multiplied by 4. And the 17 multiplied by 4 here gives us uh, 28 plus 40, which is 68. So this gives us 68%. And 17, 17 over 25 times 100 gives us 68%. Um, so what percentage, percentage of $25 is $17? It is 68% of $25. Now let's continue by looking at another question. How do we calculate a percentage of a number? And these are questions that you're going to come across from time to time, whether on paper two, whether on your multiple choice paper. And it's very important to, to have a solid understanding of how to work them out. So calculate a percentage of a number. Question is what percentage, what, what is 40% of 200? 40% of 200 simply is to write the percentage over 100. So we write 40 over 100. And we multiply that number by 200 grams, as we have in the question here. So percentage goes over 100 multiplied by that number. So here we can do a simple division. And here we can say 2 times 40 gives us... 80. Um, so that would be 80, um, 80 grams. I want to introduce you to another idea here where sometimes it is necessary to change your, your um, percentage to, to decimal. Sometimes you're working out some questions and they are not numbers that can be simplified as easily as this. So for example, what if you wanted to find um 12 percent of of um 30. so 12 percent of 30 gives you 12 over 100 times 30 and this doesn't uh, doesn't divide out cleanly as this one so we, here we can say 100 into itself one 100 into 200 goes two times but there's no such cancellation here a simple solution can be just to change this percentage here to decimal form. So we can change 12% to 0 0.12. And changing it, we simply multiply it by 30. So 30 multiplied by 0 0.12. Let's just do that very quickly. 0 0.12 times 30. And remember that on your multiple choice paper, you will not be using a calculator. So it's important that you remember these little skills where you can change uh, 
percentage to a decimal and that makes it a bit easier to work out in those cases where you don't have direct um, divisions or cancellations like this. So we can uh, multiply here, zero times two is, two is zero, three two is six, and three one's three. And notice that we have two places of decimal. So we have um, 3.6. So put, to put this question in context, if we were saying what is 12% of $30, then we could put this 12 in decimal form and that would give us 0 0.12. And um, remember, you're dividing it by 100. 12 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.12. Multiply it by 30. And in multiplying it by 30, we get um, 3.60, which means that 12% of $30 would be $3.60. So it is very, very important to remember this little um, idea here. Next, let's look at another question. What is 70% of 50? Remember, finding 70% of 50, the percentage goes over 100. So we write 70 over 100 times 50. And here we have another simple um, cancellation. We can divide by 50 here. So 50 into this into itself goes one time. 50 into 100 goes two. And two here can divide 70. 35 times. So here we get $35. Importantly though, because you are multiplying, and remember that multiplication is commutative, you can always switch the numbers in a percentage. So calculating 70% of 50 is also the same thing as calculating 50% of 70. And so you can switch the numbers depending on the question, depending on what part seems easier to you. You can always switch them around and it will give you the same answer. So 70% of 50 is the same thing as 50% of 70. And so we write 50 over 100 times 70. And there we have another. We can divide here and 2 into this 1 into this 35. So these little skills are very important whether you're doing CXE whether you're doing city and guilds uh, or whatever exam that you're doing, you can always, um, if you're working out, working out a percentage and the number doesn't feel very um, fun for you to work with, as in it's, it, there, there's nothing um, to cancel out to get an easy answer, given that you won't be using a calculator, you can, all, you can choose to switch your percentages. So 70% of 50 is the same thing as 50% of 70, or if you want to write it as a decimal. So let's write it as a decimal. 70% um, would be the same thing as 0 0.7. And we want to multiply that by 50. And so um, 50 times 0 0.7, 700, In this case, we have one um, decimal place. So notice that we get the same number each time. Um, whether we change the percentage to a decimal and multiply, whether we calculate it directly by saying 70% over 100 times our number, or whether we choose to flip the, num flip the numbers around by saying instead of calculating 70% of 50, we calculate 50% of 70. Same result. Percentages are very fun to work with and they're very useful. Like I said, they will pop up in your question one in the consumer arithmetic section and there will be many many questions on your um, multiple choice paper that deal with percentage for more information and practice remember to go to csec um, um, of twitter.com look into look at the past paper section look at the multiple choice section and practice paper section there are many many questions there for you to practice with and develop your skills and of course if you have questions you can remember to drop them in the box uh, that's it for now until next time continue working hard and best wishes with your exam.